We're still at Murph 2019 at the Slice Engineering booth. You guys are making the Mosquito Hardened, which is a really fascinating product, by the way. And before we get into what it is and what it does, a quick shout out to the sponsor of my trip to Murph this year, Prusa Research. Uh, they're showing off their SL1 and the CW1 cleaning and hardening curing station. That's what it's called. And the goal is to make resin printing a lot cleaner. So check that out at the link below. But yeah, Chris, Mosquito hardened. Yes. What is it and why is it different? Sure, sure. So the mosquito was was born out of uh, my frustration with changing nozzles. So I'm just gonna grab one real sure, quick. Sure, yeah. That'll help explain. So um, you know with with a uh, here, here's one with a nozzle. So oh, yeah. with uh, a typical hot end, when you when you unscrew the nozzle, the the uh, the hot components come loose and uh, it just doesn't resist a torque. So the mosquito does resist the torque of a nozzle change. And uh, we do that by separating the uh, the heat break job from the structural element job, and so we have an external structure that resists a torque and all forces. That allows us in turn to use a much thinner wall heat break. It's about 75 microns wall thickness. So uh, with the the smaller wall thickness, uh, very little heat can get up vertically into the flow path. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the basic idea is instead of just having one single tube that connects the heat sink to the hot end to the block, you have five right and you have a bunch of screws in there but yeah, screws, yeah only one of them does the job of guiding the filament and the four on the outside are just structural right that's right yeah yeah so it, it, the various advantages to that you know aside from one-handed nozzle change we also have a wrench now for that um uh we have we have one overall length so if you get the high flow magnum version or if you get the standard edition same overall length you can have both in a dual system and uh and you know just the convenience of uh, integration of one length so so the, the heating zone moves up and not it, it doesn't get longer and longer like you saw with the e3d super volcano that is now this this massive block that just extends past the heat sink right right and in, in addition to that uh one set of nozzles will cover cover both versions because it's not a dedicated nozzle so mm -hmm. yeah and, and the the Mosquito Hotten is roughly like, it, it fits into the existing like ecosystem of products. Like the nozzles are the same, right? Right. And the size overall is also somewhat compatible to the E3D V6. So it, it, it's going to fit on many machines, right? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. That was the design intent, is to have the overall length of uh, typical of uh, uh, all metal hot ends. Um, but also for OEM applications, because it's modular, um, for instance, we have here on a Maker Gear uh, a shortened version, which uh, uses the, the mounting plate as a heat sink. Um, we can do adaptations that are, that are ideal for any OEM. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this is this is a uh, this is not a budget hot end, right? This is this is something that improves on the technical front. How much how much are these right now? Our, our uh, show price right now is 150 for our highest level, which is the Magnum version. So that's and a long hot zone. 30, right? So and it it is more expensive, but keep in mind all our all of our machining and assembly and quality control is all made in the USA. It's actually right here in Indiana, so uh, it's uh, you know you, you pay for quality, so. And, the, and it is, I mean, the, the core idea why you're doing this is because you can make it much more robust right. than if you had to do it with a single heat break. Uh, that's right. That's right. And material selections, uh, we we uh, save save no expense with uh, making all the everything hot, high temperature rated, um, uh, and our nozzles, which are are made out of a high vanadium tool seal, we call them vanadium nozzles for short. Um, they have an extremely high abrasion resistant at at elevated temperature, so um, you never have to worry about wearing them out with carbon fiber filament. That's the default nozzle. That is that's the only nozzle we sell right now. So we we uh, we only go for the high end as a rule, you know. And and um, we're sold. We we're having trouble keeping them in stock. We're we're selling them so quickly. So uh, in a few weeks they'll be back in. Yep. Copper block and all that. Um, and and w one thing you mentioned, like the heat sink less version. Um, right. do, do we have one of those that uh, is installed on the Maker Gear right now, um, just as a demo? We haven't released it yet, but um, 
you can any any time you have a, a large uh, metallic plate as the adapter, you know, very little heat can get up through these surgical tubes. So, um, you know, you can get away with without having a heat sink fan at all. Right. And what I'm seeing down here is like this is just the, the standard kind of extruder that you've got an adapter for. Um, this is like Creality or something, it right? A, uh, I think it's a standard, you know, one of the yeah. printers. Um, it has an M6 thread, so CraftBot is one that we adapted for. That is a, obviously a duet, and uh, our part. We've got a screw type mount maker. mount on that. That right. Right, and, and then the Bontech. Right, the newest uh, Bontech is the BMG M, and that's uh, adapted. It actually has the anti-rotation features built into the plastic. Uh, that way, you get the benefit of the one-handed nozzle change without an adapter. So that, that's what you have right now. What's what's coming next? I mean, you've already moved from the original, um, like short heat zone uh, version to the Magnum. Like, what's what's the next step for this? Well, certainly, um, you know, the the speed of, of FDM or FFF printing ha has been has been uh, its Achilles heel. So uh, we we want to accommodate large format printers. So we're going to look at high flow, but still maintaining the precision. Um, and, uh, and of course, accommodating high temperature OEMs. Uh, next year, we expect that uh, hot chambers will, hot print chambers will become more of a more of a popular thing for desktop printing, and we're ready for that. We'll, we'll, we're looking into other means of cooling other than fans, and uh, and and really, it comes down to what the OEMs want. So we're we're quickly we're able to quickly customize uh, because of our our partner with a, our machine shop. We can turn around prototypes and all this all the engineering services very quickly. You can make it fit anywhere. All right. Uh, Definitely, it, it's nice to see where it's where it's come to, and, and you know that this is such a nice nice product now. Um, yeah, thanks for your time. Thank you, Tom. I yeah. appreciate it, and thanks for watching.